Ever since I was a little boy, I wanted a pie hole at home. I didn't know what it was apart from it being a great ad blocker, but I do know that rich people with a lot of money really love selling you cheap stuff and they love selling your data. Outside of it being an ad blocker, I didn't really understand how it worked, but also I didn't really feel urgent pressure to get it because I already have an ad blocker. I have a cookie eater, a VPN, good browsing habits. I don't click phishing links, so why would I need one? Well, I got my home lab. First thing I did, obviously, install it because everybody's doing it and yeah, they should be. <laughs> and you should too. The, the byproduct of this video is going to be that you will not trust your TV, you will not trust your phone, you will not trust your laptop, you will not trust yourself. Big tech has all of their wires in our head. No, this is not a conspiracy channel. Yes, this is a tech channel, but technology is getting scary, man. Let me tell you about it. So what is a pie hole? Well, outside of everybody having one, it's a DNS sinkhole, which acts as an ad blocker. To understand that concept, you just need to understand that every time you connect to the internet, your browser needs to resolve the address you put in and what IP address it matches to, okay? DNS is essentially the internet's phone book. And at the surface, it sounds pretty innocent, right? A phone book, that can't be too scary, right? But I want you to rewind back to the days when we actually did have phone books. You're reading it too. Yeah. <laughs> Plot's a little thin, but it's full of surprises. Yeah. <laughs> the real yellow pages from South Central Bell. And just remember and how many advertisements they had. Also, remember paying for one? Yeah, neither did I because they were free. Why were they free? Because you, my dear consumer friend, were the product. We are all the product on this blessed day. The phone book didn't spy on you, it just gave you ads. So as technology progresses forward, the phone book becomes digital, obviously. Running a phone book is pretty thick. We can't have everybody have one of those. We better centralize it to make it really optimized for the final user's convenience. And it was pretty innocent in the beginning. And then people realized that you can target ads to make people buy more stuff. So what happened? Most DNS servers are owned by a few huge companies. Google and Cloudflare are the two biggest ones by far. Trick question, what does Google like doing? It likes spying on you. And just by you watching this video, they're already spying on you. Yeah, and that concept should already be scary enough. But let's keep digging, shall we? So you're a privacy responsible person, or maybe you're not. And wow, at that point, I have a digital bridge to sell you. But chapter, wait, I have privacy add-ons and extensions on my browser. I use Brave, you might think. And yeah, but not all your browsing happens through your phone. This is a concept that I understood, but I was never able to internalize it until I saw the dashboard of my Bible page. It's everything is spying on us, man. And privacy is just dead. And yes, you might have ad blockers on, on different devices, but man, everything listens to you. Okay, even your router, which is supposed to be your best friend, let's be honest, they are not. Verizon doesn't have anybody's best interest in mind outside of their shareholders' value. It is absolutely disgusting the amount of traffic these people send to tracking domains. Okay, and now let's pretend a little bit. We still have the phone book in our hand and we start browsing it. Hmm, what is this? There's so many different driving instructors. I don't know, whoever's on the first line, that's the one I'm gonna get. This is how phone books would make their money. They would put seemingly targeted advertisements on the different pages. If you're looking for D, you're probably looking for drivers or something else inappropriate for YouTube. So they're gonna put the appropriate advertisements on those pages. And now I want you to imagine that your phone book has a little microphone. Ooh, now we can listen to when Chavner wants to make pancakes. Cakes. Now we know that he wants to learn driving. Very good information. All of these items we're going to go and sell to the highest bidder because I gotta pay more money to be first on the list because Trevor's too lazy to click on the second link. And let's not forget, you will also need a car later, you will need insurance later. All of those things come together. Your phone book is your entry point to the world, to all of the different businesses you interact with. Your own phone book knows all of this about you. And most people have, per aggregate, enough similarities in their behavior 
that it becomes very simple for an algorithm to plot you in different buckets and then sell you to the highest bidder. If it sounds scary, yeah, I know. So let's keep going. Let's move over a couple of decades forward. At this point, we have the technology to put all of these phone books together, but one phone book's pretty thick. Now combine it by a couple of billion, and it's gonna be quite a few phone books. And if you're thinking, oh, this sounds pretty expensive, yeah, you would be right. That's why a few very generous companies like Google are going to front the costs of the server, they're gonna host it themselves. And now we have a few pretty big phone books that are ready to resolve the whole world's problems. Nowadays, we're pretty used to expressing our thoughts over text-based services, and now we're even more primed to release personal information about ourselves and about our plans and thoughts and products which need their pairing, they need their purchaser. We need to understand what people need and which buckets of people we need to sell to. Dear viewer, we are the product. <laughs> Let's move forward a couple more years. Users start to wise up against this behavior. They install ad blockers, they install privacy browsers and, and similar products on their, on their system so they can isolate themselves and not have their thoughts be read by a malicious entity. And all of those tools are gonna do a pretty good job of protecting your browsing behaviors for the most part. And this is a big reason why we have accounts that require email for pretty much everything nowadays. You remember back in the day, you could just put in a username to most applications and they would be more than happy to accept it for you? Yeah, not anymore, because an email is much easier to link to your personality, and then we can start adding on buckets of interests onto your email. So for example, if you go look for driving lessons, movie tickets, cooking recipes, all of those things will be linked against your email, and then they will be linked against your behavior. Do you know it actually makes a difference when you look up for pancake recipes? If you look them up late at night, the algorithm is able to deduce that you might have problems in real life. Bad eating habits. Oh, maybe we like sugar. Oh, maybe we like naughty food. Oh, maybe that person is a little obese. Or, oh, maybe this person is going through a hard time. Hmm, maybe we should sell them antidepressants. Or maybe we should sell them some more sugar and goody food because it's more addictive and then we can sell them even more products because they will gain weight from it, mental health issues. The, the rabbit hole goes deep with this one. There are people that have been thinking about this for the past 20 something years. This is a very well refined field and a very, very, very predatory system that has been spawned out of it. Advertisers are doing their job on one hand, but on the other, at what cost? You're a privacy oriented person, right? So you add all of those blockers on your system and you're chilling. Well, that's what I thought for many years. And then I started realizing, hmm, Google seems to know too much about me. It must be the emails. And then I got ProtoMail, which allows you to, to produce a new email for different services. That's great. And it actually, it did help. Okay, let's move forward a couple more years. Advertisers become smarter. Privacy-oriented users become also smarter. They realize Google knows all of this stuff about me from my phone too, right? Yeah, they're able to track your phone as well. So you wise up, you get an ad blocker on your phone as well now. Perfect, you're chilling, right? Now, no longer can Google really track your search history between devices. Well, that is unless you have an email account with Google that is linked with your Google profile, which is going to amalgamate all of your interests and put you in a nice, beautiful bucket with everybody else that is similar to you. To recap, we have a fully private system on your computer, Windows with an ad blocker, cookie eater, and you have an ad blocker installed on your phone. You have aliasing added for different profiles to make all of your private information more difficult to link against yourself and to put you in this isolated bucket. And we're chilling, right? Well, I think I recall saying that we run Windows. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Windows is already selling all of your information behind your back, including activities outside of your apps. Yeah, you like gaming a lot, or you like browsing websites, or you like editing pictures, or watching movies on your computer. Oh, sorry about that. that's mandatory telemetry we have to send. But to improve your experience, we're also gonna sell it, because providing you the best experience possible comes at a price. Oh, that's fine. I'm just gonna install a different operating system. Oh, oopsie, all of my apps don't work on this. 
sorry, so I guess I'm stuck with Windows. Ah, but look at this. There's solutions to this. There's privacy scripts. Fine. I'm gonna run all of the privacy scripts. Now I'm able to completely isolate myself on my computer. And then I stand away and I put away my phone. Oh, up until I sit down on my couch to watch TV at uh, or when I switch console, uh, or go read on my nice Kindle. Uh. All of those things track you. All of those devices monitor you. Have you noticed that the cost of smart devices keeps dropping? Well, there's a reason for that. The devices that cannot have an ad blocker installed on them are becoming cheaper because they can subsidize the cost from selling your personal information, as described earlier. Even if you are able to go and remove all personally identifiable information from all of your hardware, you would still be sending out information through one access point, through the internet. Your router, which communicates to everybody your IP address that you send. And even if you have a million email addresses, use different browsers for different activities, tabs, complete isolation between everything, it still links against one IP address, baby. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really do shopping nor does my wife do gaming. So splitting my IP address based on activity is not that difficult. This is where getting a VPN comes in the picture because you streamline all of this information through one exit node. How does a VPN work? Very briefly, all of your local traffic is encrypted. All of the addresses you ping are encrypted and are sent through a funnel into a machine with a bunch of other people's traffic and it's communicated out into the world, also known as an exit node, with the same IP address. And that way it, it becomes now indistinguishable whose chapter, whose chapter's wife, and who are these other 3 million people or whatever coming out of the same exit node. Great. And that is a huge win for privacy. That is another layer that you're peeling away. But that doesn't resolve the full picture because your traffic that comes out, it, it needs to be decrypted and it needs to communicate to the services that you're trying to communicate at the end of the day. And all of the services have telemetry domains. They have the actual service, which is pretty small portion of the overall picture. They have a lot of tracking information there. Even though you have a million people using the same phone book, their usability patterns are unique because you are your unique person. And because everybody goes and, and flips through the, the phone book pages, the, the phone book holder, Google in this case, or Cloudflare, whoever, knows this about you. They have enough information to start identifying. And finally, we get to the point of why you should get a Bible. This is another layer of the whole privacy pie. This is another layer that will obfuscate you. Basically, when you want to go read an article on the internet, only the article will be loaded. Because every time you load a page, you have requests for the content, the thing you're actually interested in, and then all of the garbage, like ads, tracking, cookies, all of those come from different domains. And this is where the sinkhole part of piehole comes into play, because when you load the page, it comes with all of these domains that it also wants to load the content, tracking, ads, and the ads and the tracking are very well documented and known domain names. Those addresses will just never be resolved because Pyhole uses a list of naughty phone book pages. It's just never going to actually allow your phone book to flip to them, even though the page you're trying to load will also request them to be loaded. And that's pretty sick. But the sinkhole part of Pyhole doesn't actually block the algorithmic ability of Google and similar to be able to analyze your behavior and link you to yourself. And at this point, the best thing you can do is just ditch Google altogether and rely upon yourself to be your own phone book. You could just go back to basics where you would have a little notebook where you would jot down your best friend's phone number and the hospital's phone number and the driving instructor's phone number and so on and so forth. And how do you get those phone numbers in the first place? By going and talking to the source themselves. Your friend is gonna give you their phone number. The driving instructor is gonna give you their phone number or maybe you will see it from an ad. And this is achievable in a modern context. By getting the software code unbound, you tell your system that you no longer want to go and ask Papa Google for the authoritative IP address for this domain name and you go and you get the IP address yourself directly from the online registry. How it works on the back end, I am not very clear on, but I am clear on the fact that I am no longer reliable on Google to host my phone book.